Dragon Ball Super Episode 50 Review. The episode title is Goku vs. Black The Path to the Steel's Future. Hand down, my favorite part of this episode was Goku vs. Black. It was a very good fight, and there was even a little bit of interesting dialogue in it. Black tells Goku, what an honor, I wanted to fight you in this body. A common theory is that in the future, a Makaioshin or some kind of demonic entity possesses Goku's body after it died from a heart virus. And because there is one thing where he clutches around his heart later on in the episode, now that is obviously due to the body shot that Goku did, but it could also be meant as an indication. Like, the reason they had him get punched there was just to bring up the possibility. Because I did think that's where Goku held his heart when he had that injury. So you never know. Maybe part of the reason was the body shot, but maybe there were more to it. Because theory is that if he, let's say he possessed the Goku body in the future of Trunks timeline, in the future Trunks timeline, Goku body could still have the heart virus. However, there is a hole in this theory, of course, which is that when Goku died, I would assume, I don't think it was ever confirmed, but I think it is safe to assume in the future Trunks timeline, Goku got to keep his body after he died, meaning if it followed the same kind of thing that happened with Raditz, his body would simply disappear at the wake of the call of Kami, who would technically still be the guardian of the Earth at the time of Goku's death in the future timeline. Now, Goku and the, uh, Black started fighting when Goku and his base, so in the trailer, Goku was not getting an act kicked. No, Goku actually was kind of winning that fight, in my opinion, but it was very unclear, and Trunks even later implied that Black had gotten a little bit stronger since the last time they fought. And he also, Black also commented during their fight, Pain makes me stronger. Now, the first thing I thought was a Zenkai boost, but we're not even sure if he is Goku. I mean, he could have Goku body, so I guess he could be getting a Zenkai boost, but I'm not really sure about that one. Now, at one point, they, he does over here that mentioned the time machine, so he destroyed Trunks' time machine. But apparently, due to like a distortion in space time, that was what allowed the rain to take him into the past, and what the cause of the distortion was the time machine. So eventually the distortion like fixed itself, and it started pulling Black back into the portal. But before Black leaves, he destroyed Trunks' time machine, and the boy gets pulled back to the future, where, where we get the explanation on what that ring is. Beerus and Winks explain that it's a Kaioshin ring, like the Tara earrings, and it's a relic of the Kai, I did a video on this, I will write the video, in, in the video I explained it, but yeah. It is the, the, it is a ring of the kind which I liked. I like it. It makes sense. However, it is then explained that the ring should only be able to take you into the future. Using the ring to get to the past should be impossible, and that would where the whole distortion in space time and the time machine came into play. Now, there is something interesting about this. Vera said what happened is impossible. It shouldn't be able to happen. And Vera throughout the whole thing is just commenting on Black. Like, oh, he looks like Goku. Oh, he has the ring of the Kaioshin. Vera doesn't seem very concerned. Waste and Vera, though, are very firm under no more time traveling stance. However, the time machine is destroyed. Trunks is freaking out that he couldn't keep his promise to his mom and Mai, who we'll talk more about later because Mai is special. But what happened is, is that Trunks goes to Beerus after the time machine is destroyed, and after Black is pulled back into the future, and he pretty much asks Beerus to give him a time ring, let him go back to the future. Beerus, of course, tells him that he is the god of destruction, and that's not what he does. Alright, he can't have that ring, only the Kaioshin have it. And then Bulma has already run off because he wants to figure out what to do, because he can't remake the time machine, apparently. I think Bulma could remake the time machine if she really wanted to. I think if you gave her enough time, and, and in fact, you could theoretically, could you just summon the dragon? I'm not sure if it's been in years since the last time they summoned Generon, I think it had. But couldn't they just summon Generon and just ask him for a time to, like, recreate the time machine or restore it? I just wanted to point that out. Gathering the Dragon Ball would take, like, a day at this point. But, so they're all freaking out. Bulma ran into Castle Corp during the conversation between Beerus and, uh, Trunk. And this is where things get interesting. This is where things get interesting. Bulma comes out with the cell time machine. 
throws it on the ground, and he reveals, of course, a cast. He comes out with a castle. Throws it on the ground, and still time missing. And there are a couple of problems I noticed. First of all, I finally realized they, they won't all fit in the time machine. And secondly, it looks like they're going to need to clean it up. So I feel really bad for them. Because that thing does not look like it could operate properly until it is cleaned. But yeah, I mean, the episode is pretty self-explanatory. So if you want me to give you a shortened version, Goku and Black fight. Black go back to the future. And uh, we, get, we find out how we're going to get to the future with Cell's time machine. Now, at the very end of the episode, we do see Mai's hand move. Uh, if you guessed that Mai was alive, good for you. You hadn't really accomplished much to begin with. Clearly obvious, Mai was not dead. That is besides the point. Mai is alive. And the next episode is about Mai feeling transcending time. There was one thing in this episode I really did enjoy, though, with the Vegeta and the trunk stuff. Oh my god, I love that. That was so good. So good. So fucking good. The stuff with my and with Vegeta, not my trust. So I, I'm a little tired right now, but no, the stuff with with a Vegeta and Trunks, when Trunks was like looking at Vegeta in shock. I mean, the gene, when Trunks left, Vegeta was still kind of a douchebag. He was still kind of like an asshole. But now he's like a really nice guy. He's a family man. So this is all really new to Trunks. Now, the last thing I do want to talk about is the Pilaf gang. I'm sorry. They wasted time again. So there's only two or three minutes dedicated to the fire brigade of the Pilaf gang. But I am not going to rant about it this time. The reason I'm not going to rant about it is because it appears this time the Pilaf gang could be a reference to the Dragon Ball special Goku's Fire Brigade. In the original Dragon Ball, they did a, an OVA special that was meant to be a public service announcement, and it was called Goku Fire Brigade. If you can't, if you never seen it, go check it out. It's relatively entertaining. And if you have any kids, if you're like somebody that has like a kid, or you're trying to get like a younger, younger sibling into Dragon Ball, definitely throw them a special. It's really good for kids to see it. It's very informative and educational and a fire safety. But in the thing it's called, the whole special is called Goku's Fire Brigade, and Pilaf calls his team here Pilaf's Fire Brigade. So I really like that reference. Maybe it is a reference. Maybe it is a coincidence. But I like it. So I'm not going to say it's a reference. But I enjoyed the episode. Um, you know, relatively good. I'll talk about my prediction for next week's episode in the podcast with Anime Export, which I'm probably going to go and record later on today. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed the review, please leave a like. Tell me your thoughts on the episode in the comment section down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is One Piece Nation, signing out. Peace.